So what we're going to do today is the RSI divergence strategy. It's created some very good buy signals recently. This was yesterday in Apple. Uh, this is on a five minute uh, chart. So you can see the buy signal created a good buying opportunity. Uh, there was a buy signal on the 1st of March as well, but didn't create a good bounce, but on the 24th, create a good up move there. And also on the 23rd of February, create an up move as well. So the more shorter time frame you go, uh, the more signals you're going to get but some of them can be not that great so for example this one the signal is not that great so if i go into the 15 minute chart um here you can see some beautiful buy signals here this created a huge buy signal and went up but again there can be some false buy signals here as well a good buy signal there which is all similar to the ones in the five minute chart so if you can check in the sby and go into daily chart daily would be the ideal time frame because the lower time frame you go to, the more accurate the signal is going to be. So you can see a really great buy signal here on October 22, so which was the last bottom we had on the SPY. So you could have grabbed this great big up move. Uh, and then a buy signal there, which led to a, <clears throat> a short term up move from 417 to 457. Uh, again, a good trade here on the 8th of October. Good buy signal there. And also in the 2020 crash, during the coronavirus crash, it created a really great signal for the bottom of the transaction as well. So uh, these signals, be careful using the signals. If you're using the signals, it's really good if you do it with our Q5 course strategy, which is available on our course. Um, so that's also similar to the uh, RSI mean reverting kind of style. So if you can look at some of the trades here, uh, we went long here, short here, long here. Uh, short, not, not short, long here, close position there, long here, close position there, but we also ended short positions as well. So this is short here and then we closed here, uh, short here, closed here. Some really good trades, short here, uh, close here. And this is ideally RSI's uh, on balance volumes. Many of the divergence are generally used for a mean reverting strategy. So if you wanna check out that course strategy, uh, feel free to visit our quant program course on our website uh, this is our courses available as well so if you don't want to do the course it's fine as well like just make sure that you do some of the free strategies especially the one with the on balance volume or the um, rsi strategies those kind of strategies generally tend to work well uh, with these kind of divergence indicators so once you've got a back tested framework that this strategy has worked then it's much more ideal uh, but the but the careful thing that you need to be uh, worried about here is that the time frame so don't try to force yourself to enter into extremely short a time frame like one minute or something that could be the worst thing you can do so now the entire code is available in the description anyways i'll explain the code to you um you can just copy paste it so this is in version 5 so just as i talked before uh, there's version 4 as well uh, in our YouTube channel, but again, PineScript is kind of moving on there in that transitionary phase where they are moving on to version four, I mean version five, and many of those old strategies will stop, will stop working in a bit. So you need to be quite careful uh, in moving on to that transition. So that's why I created this video so you guys can transition smoothly. So I'm going to explain to you how this coding has been done. So basically, it's just in version five, which kind of d dictates that we are in version five. Uh, and then indicator, the name of the indicator, and then the period. So I've chosen 15, you can do 17, 18. The more far away you go, the more accurate the signal, the more shorter time frame you go, the less accurate the signal is gonna be. So then comes the pivot right, pivot left, maximum range and minimum range. So what pivot right and pivot left does basically is that um, you're gonna have lots of fall signals. So sometimes a lower low is formed uh, after like three or four days or five days or six days. So until then it's normal, uh, like you're seeing a divergence coming up. So in order to avoid that, we delay our signal a bit. We delay our signal by, uh, in this one, five bars. So you can delay it to three bars or two bars or one bar, but what happens is that, is that you're gonna get even more false signals. So in order to avoid the false signals, I put in like five bars. Now you can put in like 10 bars, but that'll be too much of a delay because then the trade might have already happened. So the sweet spot I have seen is five. So you can always optimize some of these values. So like the 15 period, you can always optimize. We've taught the optimization process uh, in our course using Ami Broker software. Uh, but anyway, just don't go so low on the pivot right and pivot left. The maximum range is basically where how how much of a period do you want to see the divergence because we don't want a divergence to show a line from last year so that's why the maximum range of 50 is being put so i hope you guys got an understanding of how the pivot left pivot right works so don't give me a comment saying that hey my code is kind of delayed 
uh, by a few bars. The reason the delay is intentionally put, the delay is put so that you don't have a false signal. Now, if you wanted to remove that, you can change it to zero or one, but guess what? You're gonna have lots of false signals and then don't come blame me uh, saying that it created lots of false signals. Uh, so then basically it's just RSI value. You're gonna store the RSI value to RSI. So you use TA dot RSI. So that's basically the difference in the version four to version five. In version four, we did just normal RSI and then brackets. Uh, but in version 5 it's ta.rsi and then we plot the line so which is basically the gray line that you see here and then we created like mid lines and top and bottom lines which is not really necessary but i just put it so that you guys can get an understanding because sometimes you want the line to be below 70 for example during the uh, corona crash the signal was generated when the um you know line was below 70 so uh, you might want to check that one if you want there might be some alpha in looking into that perspective as well and then basically just fill the uh, line with black and everything so uh, now how we code it is we've created a thing called pivot low so pivot low is to find uh, if there's a pivot low point that's been created so basically it's the dot pivot low source left bars and right bars uh, so we know the pivot left and pivot right which is five which is what we have created as the left and the right bars and then the source is the rsi value uh, so that will give us a false or a true signal and if there is true then it'll be stored uh, the pivot low true will signal that hey dude there's a pivot low has taken place um, and then we've got to confirm the range so we created a function which confirms that the range has taken place in that 50 period uh, so we we created the minimum range and the maximum range, so this is between 5 and 50. Uh, and then we check the RSI has created a higher low. So we've created a pivot low, uh, now we need to check the um, whether the RSI has created a higher low, and that's when this function is taking place. So we check if the RSI value of the pivot right is greater than the RSI value a few periods back, and that's when this... Uh, so if you can see the TA dot value when so basically it gives out what the indicator's value was at that specific point and also confirms the range as well. So um, similarly, we check the price lower if the price is creating a lower low. So price lower low is pretty simple. You don't have to free, uh, feed in any RSI values. You just have to put in the um, just the low, the low of the day and that should be more than enough. So if all these conditions are checked, if the price LL, the price is lower low, uh, and the RSI is a higher low, uh, and the pivot low is true, then we've got a bull condition, right? So then we've got a signal. So then the idea is to plot the signal. Uh, so for that, we have actually used uh, these two lines. So I have made this uh, coding. I like to keep the coding kind of structured rather than just give us some random names. So that's why all these uh, names might look kind of complicated, but then uh, you can go deep into it by looking into it and I can figure out where the errors are and that's why this coding kind of looks complicated but in reality it's it's quite simple it's just a few conditions you know as you can see uh, we just check the pivot low we just confirm the range we just check the higher low of the RSI period and the lower low of the price and then we be given the signal and then we just plot the signal and that's it uh, it's as simple as that so um, you guys can make as many changes as possible to this RSI indicator. Uh, so I've only put it in the buy signal. Like you can create a sell signal, but I heavily advise in not using the sell signal uh, simply because in a bull market, uh, it can be a big issue. You know, you can create like lots of false signals. However, during the down market, uh, the crash normally tends to die it down after a bit. Uh, it could be like, you know, you can see that RSI is really good in, in spotting that volatility. So it really sees that expansion volatility. And that's basically what RSI helps you in. You know, it's that range of the bars going wide and narrow. But on the up move, the uh, problem becomes that it can go, go up in like short volatility spaces. Uh, so you can get lots of false signals. But on the down market, RSI tends to give out more accurate signals. So that's where RSI is heavily used in mean reversion. So even in our course, uh, we did Q3, which was um, a mean reverting strategy, uh, which is also similar uh, to RSI performance. And that again uses just the bottom side. And we also use the short side, but we made some uh, a kind of a filter, uh, a rule, a specific rule, which makes sure that this, that condition is met before we enter a short trade. So we do enter short trades as well, but with a specific rule. Um, so this for the past one year, two year, because of the volatility in the market, uh, the RSI indicators and the mean reverting strategies have been performing successfully well. So this is on our course. You can see uh, we've been performing substantially well in the past few years. But when the market is kind of in the uh, in the uptrending move, it can be not that great. And that's why we have trend following strategies. So in the course, we created uh, 10 strategies. So it's, it's a mixture of all kinds of strategies, which includes trend following, momentum, 
uh, mean reverting strategy. So every single strategy performs uh, or gives out different kinds of signals depending on the market. So as risk managers, what we do is basically uh, we're not predicting the market. We are just we're just trying to manage uh, different contingencies, so different environments. We are prepared for all those things. So if the market is a trending market to the upside, that specific strategy is going to make money. If the market is going downside, the volatility is going to go up. And if the volatility is going to go up, our mean reverting strategy is going to go up as well. So we've got a portfolio of diverse strategies. So it doesn't matter what the market condition is, we are making some returns. And yeah, some strategies will be on a loss, but the other strategies will be making money, but that's good enough for us. That's what we are trying to get out of this because we're not trying to make uh, convert $1,000 to 1 million. We're trying to beat the S&P 500 CAGR of 10% every year. Uh, and to do that consistently, we need a portfolio of strategies and we need to mess around with the drawdowns as well. So if you can look at the mean reverting strategy on this one, it's got 17% drawdown. Uh, this is on the trading view pine strip, but on our AMI broker where we did um, a proper uh, data, like paid data from Norgate data, the drawdown slightly go up, like I think around 20s, uh, because the data is more accurate than the Norgate data. But there's also another strategy that we did uh, which was uh, portfolio diversification. Uh, so we did 90 stocks and then 10% on cash and 90% on stocks. And that one, I think it was just 9% to 12% of drawdowns as well because of the diversification. So you need to have a portfolio of strategies. Now, if you're not doing the course, it's fine. Just make sure you, uh, you combine yourself with many of the strategies available on a YouTube channel as well. So if you don't know anything about TradingView, um, there is the TradingView Pine script, full tutorial. Uh, now, if you want to learn how to do it in python then again the python 2023 uh, video is available as well so algorithmic trading in python so we've done it in the jupyter notebook so i'll be doing a video on quant connect soon as well uh, so it's on the recording phase right now we're trying to uh, figure out how to teach uh, you guys because quant connect is slightly more complicated than the pine script or ami broker uh, because it's purely python and it's purely coding and um, many people might find it challenging, so we're trying to put it in as lame in terms as possible and hopefully it will come around soon in the next couple of weeks or something. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video. So uh, you can you can do instead of RSI, you can do something like on balance volume or stochastic or something, but I prefer RSI. On balance volume would be a great idea because you're taking the volume into account. So you can create like a confluence, you can combine the RSI period and the on balance volume and create a strategy as well. Um, it's up to you. Uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, have a good day. If you have any doubts, uh, just let me know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.